What's up everyone, Big Dan here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about five big theories for the next Mass Effect game. Over the weekend, I got together with another incredible Mass Effect YouTuber, Mr. Holton, to discuss all things related to Bioware's next space RPG. If you haven't seen Mr. Holton's channel, he does a lot of videos on Mass Effect as well as other games like God of War. I'll put a link to his channel in the description so you can go check that out. This conversation is in two parts, so to see the rest of the conversation, check out the video on Mr. Holton's channel as well, which I will also link in the description. Also, I am currently selling limited edition merch, which you can pick up at bonfire.com slash store slash big Dan. There are two different shirt designs that will be available until January 1st. So check out the link in the description for that. Without further ado, let's dive into the interview. Okay, so the get get shape, of course, the uh, on mm -hmm. the poster, you saw that immediately. Also, as yeah. we've already touched on, we've already talked about Ranok and stuff. But I found that interesting that it was kind of split 50-50. Some people said that ah, it's just in your head. There is no geth. But then mm -hmm. we had a bunch of people who were like just like us, you know, see, so oh, that's obviously a geth. But it was yeah. so strange that there was so many people that didn't see the shape at all. Uh, yeah. I was like blown away. I was like, how do you not see that? I know, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, what was that um, picture from a few years ago? Like the dress? Like, right. is this blue or black or whatever? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of like that. But for me, once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's clearly the shape of a guess. Like, they're they're implying something there. Yeah, and then a bunch um, of bodies. Like, I think they're they're dropping hints and teasers for us. I mean, obviously, um, I feel like these things are carefully crafted to give us something to latch on to and, and analyze because um, they know how the fans are. So, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what they do. Um, I think it'd be interesting, like, to, if let's say they pick the destroy ending as canon and the geth are all destroyed does someone just like restore them from a backup or something <laughs> okay we'll make new geth like that's an easy that'd be an easy one to fix that yeah. it'd be easy to reinstall the geth or re reinstate the geth i think you just store them uh, on some server on some planet yeah yeah the Koreans just you know they they'll just build some more you know yeah. <laughs> they have the schematics left let's just do it yeah uh, because yeah, yeah it it's like, work like Legion that. was backed up to the cloud. We yeah. just we just install Legion again, you know. Not a problem. It's just a, it's just a <laughs> droid, I guess. The the, yeah. the worst thing I think is uh, they would probably be, uh, you know, autonomous or, or what do you call it, unintelligent. Uh, they wouldn't be, you know, right. They would so, go back to what they were before the Reaper upgrades and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the slave race once again, which would kind of suck. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a bummer. Because then that would like undo Shepard's choices, I think. Uh, and I think they don't yeah. probably want to touch that too much because if you do, then people are going to get pissed. But, you, you know, just a few days ago, as you might have seen, I got worried there for a bit. Uh, and I'm still worried because mm -hmm. they removed the teaser from the official Mass Effect uh, YouTube page. Yeah, it's very strange. Um I don't know what's going on over there at Bioware. We had the news uh, maybe a week or two ago about the project director for Dragon Age 4 departing the company and like who knows what reasons that happened for. It's strange though. Like it's strange to put out a teaser trailer and then just like quietly remove it. Like that's a very strange thing to do, especially since like it's been like the teaser trailer has been out for over a year. Right. It's out there. People have seen it. It's also on other channels. Like I'm pretty sure like you can still find you could probably still find it on like IGN and stuff yeah. like that. So I don't know. That's very bizarre. It's kind of like what why would why would, why did they do that? Right. You know? I, I think they did that for the uh for the Instagram page too. And I think they even removed some of the legendary edition uh, teasers. Somebody said, I don't know, I haven't controlled it. Oh, uh, yeah. The teaser for the next Mass Effect has been dropped on on basically every platform except Facebook for some reason. Yeah. They probably forgot. Maybe they maybe they don't think anybody's looking at their Facebook or something. Yeah. yeah. They forgot they had one. They forgot they had a Facebook page. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things is like, is this project still happening? Like, will will Mass Effect continue? Like, that's the first like big fear I have is like, you know. Oh, you got worry. Um, you got the same worry. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's it's just it's a weird thing like to to do. Yeah, and the weirdest thing was when they removed it, it was just a day or just half a day 
before the game awards which was just what i was like a lot of people were expecting them to drop a trailer or something else yeah or reveal yeah. the thing that michael had talked about but nothing because bioware is completely silent on why they did this and they haven't said anything it it makes it difficult like you can you can speculate 50 different things mm. as a reason why this happened um but without knowing more information it's difficult to say why they did it but i know that uh co corporations and um companies don't generally have a very transparent policy you know being transparent right. to your customers uh i spoke right. about that a few days ago and I, I just think it would be for the best if bioware tried to be more transparent with the fans just look at like santa monica studios yeah. uh who made god mm. of war they just had an interview with captain kuba the guy who's the biggest at god of war and yeah. it's so cool because the creators sit down with him and talk with him and just show the fans what they're working on, that they, they don't need to be worried. You know, just, yeah. you know, being transparent, I think, is so important. And it's just getting worse. So I think it would have been, like, super brilliant because Bioware has always been like that, you know, quiet. Yeah, I think partially it's it's difficult, too, because they do have a corporate overlord that's this giant megalith in electronic arts. So, like... I don't know what EA's policies are in terms of what their studios can say publicly and whatnot. So it might not even be their decision, you know, mm. um, in terms of like what they're allowed to say. But yeah, I think, I don't know, in the video game space, um, a lot of companies are like that. They're like pretty silent until they're like close to releasing a product and they start promoting it like hell. Like the Beth Bethesda's like that too mm. with, you know, we know nothing about Elder Scrolls Six. We, we knew nothing about Starfield until, you know, Todd Howard has started to do interviews now and has, like, talked more about the game because it's, like, coming out next year. Um, but, like, for three years, we knew nothing about Starfield. We're like, it's a space game. Mm. Okay, what, what, you know, what's it going to be? Um, so, yeah, I think there's a trend in the video game industry of, like, not being super transparent. Um, some companies try to be, like, CD Projekt Red used to try to be transparent. Now they've gone the silent route, too, right. with Cyberpunk where they haven't said anything for a long time in terms of what they're doing. Yeah, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because if they, you know, announce what they're trying to do and then they shift directions, people are like, but you said you were going to do this. Right. Uh, Good point. So... So that's a that's a tricky thing as well. Like they could come out with good intentions and say like, "Hey, here's what we're we're working on. Here's what we're planning on doing." Um, but then you know something causes them to shift directions, and then like, "Wait, what happened to this?" Right. I didn't I didn't think about that. That might actually be one of the reasons why Todd Howard's get so much shit because maybe he was very transparent at the start because he wanted to do these things, and then it just yeah. didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you never know when like something you say in an interview or any sort of like promotional will like become a meme or like be used against you. Like the 16 times the detail right. and all that ah. stuff. It's like, or uh, it just works. It's like something he just said, like that was a dem like Todd Howard's like demonstrating the settlement building system in fallout yeah. four and just offhandedly says it just works. And then you run wires that connect them all. And it, again, it, it just works. And it's just like a meme for years. Yeah. And it's like, damn it, I should have done this product demo. <laughs> well, I think it, it was for the, for the best because that's probably one of the funniest memes ever. Because yeah. whenever somebody includes that into their clips, it just makes me laugh hard. If we if we assume that they're not going to cancel Mass Effect 4 or 5, do you think they mm. will use the Unreal Engine? Or do you think that's just, they're just testing, you know? Yeah, I I think they're just testing the waters with it i mean i don't know it's funny because like ea shifts directions all the time right so ea pushed everybody to use the frostbite engine because they're like hey we don't want to pay the licensing fees on proprietary engines um at one point ea removed all of their like new releases from steam because they didn't want to pay for steam fees they're like you can only buy games through origin and then they reverse these policies so like you know now ea games are all back on steam um, cause they realized, Hey, we're probably leaving a lot of money on the table, even though we're making less cut per sale. And maybe they're seeing that, you know, using, having every studio use the frostbite engine might create technical problems that cost them more money in development time and stuff. And so maybe using a third party engine that they have to pay licensing for like unreal, uh, might save them money in the long run. 
with uh, technical support and whatnot. We'll see. Um, I, I think it would be good if they're open to like not using Frostbite. There's some things that are good about Frostbite in terms of... like I think the environments in Andromeda and Inquisition look phenomenal oh yeah but the care but the character models look really like plasticky like yeah. everybody's very like fake looking you know obviously there was a lot of stuff that they had to build from the ground up to make those games like they said there was not even like a save load system in the game because right. like these games were developed for battlefield which is all like checkpoint saves and like online gameplay so there's no there's no there's no like quick saves in Battlefield, you know, right. or like a manual saves in Battlefield. So that system was never built. So like they had to build that. They had to build some other things from the ground up just to build Dragon Age Inquisition, which I think was the first game they built on Frostbite. The only one that's um, successful too. Yeah, exactly. The only successful one, yeah. <laughs> I think it's possible that they'll go in that direction, but I also think it's equally possible that they might evaluate it and EA says, you know what? You guys are still going to use Frostbite. <laughs> We've got to be cheap about it. I, I, I really hope that they use uh, Unreal, but I don't know why. <laughs> I just have this idea that it's going to be better. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think there's any actual... Because somebody wrote in a comment in the first video when I, where I talked about Jeff Grubb talking about it. He's the guy who basically is an inside source and stuff, or he has inside yeah. sources. But there was one person who wrote, or several people who wrote that Frostbite isn't actually a bad engine. It's just that they didn't have anything from the ground up. They had to build everything and that's why everything yeah. sucked. But then yeah. why did Andromeda suck so much? Which maybe it sucked at the start, at least, um, compared yeah. to Dragon Age Inquisition. Like why... Why was that first game that they built so much better than the other two? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say. Because there's like a lot of reasons that go into these games. But yeah, it's like Inquisition. I mean, I didn't play Inquisition on launch, but it wasn't like a buggy mess. Like Andromeda, like you could still find these old like clip montages and stuff of how crazily broken that game was when they released it. Right. And they spent like six years on that game or mm. five years or something on that game, which is crazy. I don't know how Bioware works internally on these projects. Like I know they split up into different teams. So like there was always like one kind of core people who was pushing a creative direction for the Mass Effect franchise. So it's like from the top, at least it's like Casey Hudson and Mac mm. Walter. And those guys were like the Mass Effect team. And then you had Mike Laidlaw, I think, and uh, yeah. David Gator, and those guys were the Dragon Age guys. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, maybe they just had a better team on <laughs> Dragon Age, I don't know. <laughs> or like, you know, they maybe they've made it before more experienced developers left the company. It's hard to say. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it is interesting, though. That it's like, you would think that the roadblocks and like you know, speed bumps or whatever with the engine would have caused more issues on the first game they made with it. But no, it was like the second and third games they made on Frostbite were like a the technical absolute. nightmare for yeah. them. We, I got to ask one last question. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, the golden egg uh, because everybody wanted me to ask this. Will Shepard return, do you think? Or do you hope so? Or do you not hope so? Um... I think it'd be great. <laughs> I kind of hope so. Um, I would love to play as Shepard again, but there it's also, there's an equal opportunity to kind of ruin Shepard's story by continuing it. Like it feels like it, it ends in a good crescendo. Um, well, maybe not the, maybe it doesn't end well, but um, <laughs> you kind of walk through three games with him or her. You get this full story arc of like, Shepard's involvement fighting in the Reaper War and, you know, trying to convince everybody for three games that, like, the Reapers are coming and, like, we gotta come together to stop this threat. So, I feel like, you know, ending on the Citadel DLC is, like, this perfect kind of ending for Shepard's character in some sense. I just hope that whatever they end up doing, I just hope that the character is, like, a stronger character than Ryder was. Because I thought Ryder was very disappointing. And uh, I don't want to play as, like, a wishy-washy, unsure <laughs> character. I want a more, like, confident protagonist uh, in the next <laughs> game. So, um, part of, so I'm conflicted, is what I'll say. Part yeah. of me would love to see Shepard come back and to play as Shepard again. But 
I recognize how horribly wrong that could go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm conflicted. Me too, man. Uh, I like I've uh, I wanted Shepard to return like for the for the first uh, or from the first trailer or when the teaser trailer released. I was like, ah, of course, Shepard is going to return because of the N7, you know, uh, piece. But uh, part of me has started to think that maybe it's better that uh, he or she doesn't. <clears throat> and it it's it feels strange because most of the fan base, like 80% of the fan base says, uh, yeah, <laughs> Shepard should return. Yeah. But yeah, yeah like, uh, and the thing is, I would really like for Jennifer, uh, Jennifer uh, Hale is her name, right? Yeah. I almost yep, forgot yep. her last name. Mark Muir, I do know because I've actually <laughs> asked him to do a video for me. Uh, but I would <laughs> like them to like return and just, work uh with the same characters again just because they're so beloved voice actors so yeah specifically mark too since he voiced so many of the alien characters like the hanar and the vorcha and stuff like you got to bring him back for those characters right it i still want i still run. want a hanar squad mate oh yeah blasto come on give us blasto. yeah we gotta get blasto <laughs> yeah this one did not read that far into the script this one does not share top billing so it'd be great if, yeah, Mark Mir voices like a Hanar squad mate. Would be the perfect uh, sort of Easter egg. So how do we end this video off, by the way? This interview. Mr. Holton signing out. Thank you all for watching. This has been Big Dan. Until next time, I should go.